In 7.1, you were supposed to define the term strong base. Well, this is one of those questions where a lot of people walk out of the exam room thinking they got it right, but that's actually not the case. Okay, so there's something I want you to do for me. Go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section. Define strong base for me. Okay, and also check out the other comments. You will see something. You will see that what I'm saying is correct. A lot of people actually can't define strong base. That is 7.1. On the other hand, we have 7.3 where we were looking to identify the metal M. Well, I can tell you from the get-go that the metal M is aluminium, right? Let me show you why I'm saying that is the case, okay? But before we do that, let's do 7.2 first. So we have a situation here, right? We want to identify metal M, which is an unknown metal in a metal carbonate MCO3. The following procedure is carried out. So we take 0 0.19 grams of the impure MCO3 and react it with nitric acid. We are given the volume and the concentration of the nitric acid. After the reaction, some nitric acid is in excess, and then we neutralize that nitric acid with barium hydroxide that is the situation we have we are given the equation for step one and the equation for step two okay and then the equation 7.2.1 we're supposed to find the number of moles of barium hydroxide that reacted with the excess hno3 so take a look at this step two says that the excess nitric acid is then neutralized with 20 centimeter cube of 0 0.15 moles per decimeter cube of barium hydroxide so as you can see we are given the concentration and the volume of the barium hydroxide that was used to neutralize the nitric acid so it will be pretty much straightforward what we're supposed to do in 7.2.1 okay i know fully well that the concentration is equal to the number of moles divided by volume i have a mark now i just need to substitute the concentration 0 0.15 the number of moles is what we're interested in and our volume is 25 centimeter cube which i will do which i will convert to a decimeter cube okay uh, there's two ways of doing that i can divide with 1000 or i can multiply by 10 to the minus 3 okay so the number of moles will be equal to 0 0.15 multiply by 20 multiply by 10 to the minus 3 okay now it's just a matter of putting that in my calculator. Uh, when I do that, I get 0 0.003 moles. So these are the number of moles of barium hydroxide that we used to neutralize the excess nitric acid. 7.2.1. Okay. 7.2.2. We want to find the pH of the solution after step one ph of the solution after step one okay uh, what is the amount of max we have we have five max okay so in 7.2.1 we calculated the number of moles of barium hydroxide that we use to neutralize the hno3 so basically with this number of moles of barium hydroxide we can calculate the number of moles of hno3 that were in excess and then with those number of moles we can divide with the volume find the concentration and then find the ph let me show you what i'm talking about okay so in reaction two of step two uh, you can see that the balancing coefficient of hno3 is two while the balancing coefficient of a barium hydroxide is one so what we want to do here uh, we want to say that the number of moles of hno3 divided by the number of moles of baoh2 is equal to the ratio of the balancing coefficients right so the balancing coefficient of hno3 is two that of barium hydroxide is one but I have the number of moles of barium hydroxide that we use to neutralize HNO3. Okay, so I'm going to have the number of moles of HNO3 
been equals to the number of moles of barium hydroxide multiplied by 2. So that's going to be 0 0.003 multiplied by 2. Okay. I uh, don't need to put that in our calculator, but even if we do, uh, we would get 0 0.006. So these are the number of moles of HNO3 uh, that were in excess after step one, in completion of that step, okay? So with those number of moles, we can go ahead and find the concentration of HNO3. HNO3, uh, when it breaks down, we have H plus plus NO3 minus. So because the balancing coefficient of HNO3 is one and the balancing coefficient of H plus is one, then if we find the concentration of HNO3, we will have the concentration of H+. It is a strong acid. It ionizes completely, okay? If it was a weak acid, it would be another case. But then here we have a strong acid. So let's go ahead and find the concentration of HNO3. So the concentration, number of moles divided by uh, the volume. What is the number of moles? So what we just calculated, 0 0.006. Um, let me show you something. There is an instruction here that assume that the volumes are additive. Okay, uh, that is very important. But I don't think we are going to use that in this uh, part of our question. Okay, because we're looking for the pH of the solution after step one. Okay, after step one, the concentration, the volume is only 25 centimeter cube. So we still have a volume of 25 centimeter cube at the completion of step one, okay? Our volume only becomes 25 plus 20 at the completion of step two. So in step one, we still have a, a volume of 25 centimeter cube. So we're going to have 0 0.006 divided by 25 multiplied by 10 to the minus 3, okay? Let me put that in my calculator. So 0 0.006 uh, divided by 25 times 10 to the minus 3. I'm getting 0 0.24. So this is uh, the concentration. Obviously, pH is equal to minus log of H+. plus. If we go ahead and substitute, we're going to have minus log of 0 0.24. I just need to put that in my calculator now. Okay, let me see what I get. Okay, I have 0 0.62. Okay, so this is my pH. My pH is 0 0.62 after um, step one. Let's take a look at 7.3. The interesting question, really. So the percentage purity of MCO3 in the symbol is 85%. Identify metal M. Okay, so this is the approach we are going to take. We have uh, the initial number of moles of HNO3. We can just say number of moles is equal to concentration multiplied by volume, okay? Because we are given that information in our question statement. And then we also have the number of moles in excess of HNO3. Why am I saying so? We calculated that in the question above, okay? Here's the number of moles of HNO3 that were in excess after step one. So the number of moles of HNO3 in excess, uh, we have 0 0.006 moles. So let's go ahead and find the initial number of moles of HNO3. So this is going to be the concentration, 0 0.4, multiplied by the volume, 25, divided by 1,000. So I have 0 0.4 multiplied by 25, divided by 1,000, and I'm getting 0 0.01. So I have the initial number of moles of HNO3. I have those in excess. So I can find those that reacted with the impure MCO3. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So N reacted is equal to N initial minus the number of moles in excess. So the number of moles initial, we have 0 0.01. Those in excess, we have 0 0.006. So what is 0 0.01 minus 0 0.006? I'm getting 
0.004 moles. So these are the number of moles of HNO3 that reacted. But we have the equation of HNO3 and our unknown metal carbonate. So we can use the balancing coefficient to find the number of moles of MCO3 that reacted. Okay. You can see that the balancing coefficient of HNO3 is 2 and that of MCO3 is 1. So the number of moles of HNO3 divided by the number of moles of our metal carbonate will be equal to 2 divided by 1. So the number of moles of MCO3 will be equal to the number of moles of HNO3 divided by 2 which will give us 0 0.002 moles. So these are the number of moles of MCO3 that reacted with HNO3. But we know that the number of moles can be given by mass divided by molar mass. So if we use this equation in attempt to find the molar mass, which will allow us to find the unknown metal, we can say that this 0. 002 is equal to the mass of MCO3. Okay, the mass we are given is 0 0.198, but it is impure, right? So, not 0 0.198 is going to react, but only 85% of that 0 0.198. So, we can just say that the mass is 0 0.198 multiplied by 85%. Okay, I'm finding the mass of MCO3 using percentage purity. It's just that I'm bundling it all up in one step. Divided by the molar mass of MCO3. So the molar mass of M is what we are really interested in. Okay, so let me just write capital letter M. That's what we are really interested in. Plus, what is the molar mass of carbon? That is 12, oxygen, 16, you multiply that by 3. So I'm going to have 0 0.002 being equals to, let me figure out what I'm going to have in my denominator, in my numerator, I mean. I'm going to have 0 0.1683, everything divided by the molar mass of M, 12 plus 16 multiplied by 3, that is 60. So this is what I have. If I cross multiply, I'm going to have 0 0.002M plus 60 multiplied by 0 0.002, right? Uh, if I do that, I get 0 0.12. This is equal to 0 0.1683. So 0 0.002m will be equal to 0 0.1683 minus 0 0.12. I can go ahead and divide both sides by 0 0.002 divided by... Okay, let me... Uh, do that again, divided by 0 0.002, okay? So 0 0.002 cancels out with 0, 0, point, uh, 0 0.002. So the molar mass of M will be close to 0 0.1683 minus 0 0.12 divided by 0 0.002. I'm getting 24.15, okay? Obviously, this is the molar mass of magnesium. So the metal M... It's actually magnesium and not aluminium. I'm sorry, I lied.